Welcome to Power Electronics Education Electronic Book Lecture 5 Non-Isolated DC-DC Converters This lecture is presented by Dr. Firuzare. When we have a DC-DC converter basically at the input side we have unregulated voltage and we're going to regulate the voltage and also change the output voltage magnitude so in this case we may increase or decrease the output voltage so let's uh, start with linear power supply and then we can compare it with switch mode power supply basically in linear power supply we have low frequency transformer because we need to step down the voltage and then through this diode rectifier we can rectify the input voltage and using this capacitor as a filter we can get DC voltage but you can see that we have ripple and also the voltage is not controlled because DART is not the control rectifier so in this case we can have this transistor operating in linear mode and by changing the bias current then we can change the voltage across the transistor in order to control the output voltage so here we can see that this transistor operate as a variable resistor so we can see that this sort of power supply is not a good one for high power application because we have so much loss through this transistor so that's why we need to have another type of rectifier so what's a switch mode power supply? Basically in switch mode power supply we turn on and turn off the switch so in this case we chop the DC voltage based on the pulse pattern coming from a controller and then we try to change the DC voltage or change the average over one cycle so basically this is the method that we can control the duty cycle and then we can change the output voltage so basically this sort of voltage waveform is not suitable for different applications because the output voltage is not regulated so compared to linear mode power supply we can see that we have less losses and we may have better quality by changing the switching frequency and achieving a better filter now here we can compare the switch mode power supply with the linear mode power supply so here we can see that we have a low frequency transformer basically when the frequency is decreased the size of transformer is increased while here we have uncontrolled diode rectifier and then here through a filter we can control the output voltage so in this case we have switch mode power supply here while here we have just diode rectifier we regulate the voltage through this linear rectifier so normally we recommend the linear power supply for low power applications while the switch mode power supply can be applied for high power motor drive or high power power supplies in this section we can see pulse with modulator and the controller basically to be able to control the output voltage we need to change the duty cycle so that means the turn on time and turn off time should be controlled a simple circuit diagram is shown here we can have a sawtooth and then we can compare it with the uh, DC voltage and then finally we can get this pulse pattern so basically this pulse pattern can be applied to the power switches that means whenever the reference voltage is greater than the sawtooth then the switch should be on and whenever the reference voltage is less than sawtooth then the switch is turned off so finally we can apply this signal to the power switch and then we can change the output voltage in this section we can see high frequency filter so basically as I mentioned before by turn on and turn off the switch we can control the output voltage but the case is that that sort of voltage waveform is not suitable for different applications like for example electronic circuit because we need to have continuous DC voltage so in this case we need to have LC filter second order filter so we can control the voltage DC voltage here 
but this DC voltage has harmonics and then we can have this filter then we can control the output voltage so here also we have pulse width modulator and also gate drive that means this is almost a real circuit that we can control the output voltage so basically this is a buck converter but in this case we are going to describe the high frequency filter which can regulate and remove the high frequency content when we design a power supply we can apply open loop or closed loop depends on the application if we need to have a very good dynamic response in this case we need to have a closed loop control system because if the input voltage fluctuates so in this case we can measure the output voltage we can compare with the reference and then we can compensate the error through this compensator and in this case we can control the transient but here if the input voltage fluctuates the case is that based on the reference voltage we can control the duty cycle but there is no control on the output voltage so that means if there is any fluctuation if there is any ripple coming from the DC voltage we cannot compensate on the output voltage so basically this is a simple method open loop is very simple but closed loop we need to know the model of the system which means that we have to find the um, average modeling of the system to be able to design the compensator in DC DC converters we can either analyze a steady state or dynamic so basically a steady state it can be continuous conduction mode or discontinuous conduction mode and we can consider with real or ideal components and also to analyze dynamic performance of a system we need to have a model of the system and then based on that one we can design a controller and we can look at the output voltage when we have transient a difference between a steady state and transient is that for example this is the current through, a, through an inductor here we can see that the current at the beginning of each switching cycle is not equal to the current at the end of switching cycle that means the current is increasing so in this case the system is in transient but when we analyze a DC DC converter in a steady state that means the current at the beginning of switching cycle equals to the current at the end of switching cycle so in this case we can find the conversion ratio based on the duty cycle basically there are key rules in DC DC converters to find the steady state and dynamic equations for example if you have an inductor here we can find the voltage across the inductor when the switch is on or off and then we can find the average over one cycle that means average voltage across one cycle if it's not equal to zero that means according to L the IDT which is equal to voltage so if the average voltage is not zero that means the average current through the inductor is not zero so in this case we can see that for example current is increasing but if the average over one cycle is zero that means the IDT is zero so L the IDT equals to voltage so if this one is zero that means the IDT is zero or the current is not changing at these points so that's the simple rule that we can find the steady state and dynamic equations so here we can see that for example in this case the average voltage over one cycle is not zero so that means this area is not equal to this area so here we can see that the IDT is increasing the IDT is positive and current is increasing so in this case we don't consider the high frequency content of the signal we just look at the average over one cycle in this case we can see that instead of this high frequency signal we can just find the average over one cycle and it looks like that the DC voltage appears across an inductor so in this case the current through the inductor is increased and this is the slope of current
So this rule is also true for a capacitor. That means if you have a capacitor in a steady state, we expect that the average current through the capacitor equals to zero, otherwise the voltage is increased or decreased. So that's why we can find the average current through a capacitor and in this case the voltage at the beginning of switching cycle should be equal to the voltage at the end of switching cycle but if the average is not zero that means the voltage across the capacitor is increased or decreased so in this case the system operates in transient is not in the steady state in this lecture we just consider buck converters, boost converters and buck boost converters we look at the continuous and discontinuous conduction modes for these converters. So let's start with the buck converter. Basically in buck converter the input voltage is almost greater than or equal to the output voltage. So in this case the main aim is to regulate the output voltage and also reduce the magnitude. So this is a circuit diagram. We can see that we have just a switch and by turn on and turn off the switch we can control the average over one cycle but because we apply pulse pattern with for example constant switch and frequency so in frequency domain this voltage waveform has a DC part plus harmonics so as I mentioned before this sort of voltage waveform is not suitable for different applications especially for electronic or digital systems so in this case we have to remove the harmonics and then we can get also almost a DC voltage so that's why we need to have a filter so using LC filter here as a second order filter that means we can get rid of the harmonics so the quality of output voltage depends on the size of filter or depends on the switch and frequency. So here we can see the effect of for example filter or switch and frequency on the output voltage. For example here you can see that when we increase the switch and frequency we move the harmonic content to the higher side so that means we expect to have better quality less ripple or when we have a better filter then we may have a better quality and that means that to control the output voltage we either have to have a good filter or increase the switching frequency so it's clear that by increasing the switching frequency the output voltage ripple is decreased or for the same quality we can reduce the filter size and also a larger LC filter can reduce the output voltage ripple magnitude but the size, cost and the weight of the system are increased because we have bulky passive filter. So also we can see that for different applications we may have different requirements so that's why it's a trade-off between loss, cost and weight of system so it's quite important to find the best switching frequency and also to reduce the size of passive filter. Now let's start with the buck converter when we turn off and turn on the switch. For example when the switch is turned on suppose that the voltage drop across the switch is zero because of this polarity this diode is turned off so this is a circuit diagram when the switch is on and when the switch is off so in this case because the current through the inductor can turn on the diode so suppose that the voltage across the diode is zero then we have this circuit diagram when the switch is off now we can find the voltage across the inductor and also current through the capacitor so when the switch is on so the voltage across the inductor is V in minus V out so this is the equation and also the current through the capacitor is input current or inductor current minus output current this is the equation suppose that the output ripple is not significant so we can rewrite the equation again and also suppose that the output ripple is not significant then we can rewrite the current through the capacitor so D is the duty cycle which is defined as 10 on time over switching time 
So when the switch is off, then dot can conduct. Again, in this case, the voltage across the inductor is minus V out. We can write the equation. And also current through the capacitor is almost same as before. Inductor current minus output current. Suppose that the ripple is not significant. We can rewrite the equation again here. Now we can see the voltage across the inductor over one switching cycle when the switch is on and when the switch is off. So as I mentioned before, because the system is in a steady state, then we can find the duty cycle and also conversion ratio through this equation. Because in a steady state, the average voltage across the inductor should be zero. So we can find this area plus this area which is the average voltage across the inductor and should be equal to zero. So through this equation when we find this integration and this integration we can see that V in times of duty cycle minus V out times of duty cycle plus one minus duty cycle we can simplify and then we can find the conversion ratio. That means output voltage over input voltage equals to duty cycle. So in order to control the output voltage, because input voltage is constant, we can just control the duty cycle to be able to control the output voltage. When we want to design a DC-DC converter, we have to also find size of inductor and capacitor. So the point is that we have to find the switching frequency. Normally we can find the switching frequency based on other issues like switching losses and electromagnetic interference. Then based on the switching frequency we can find the inductance and capacitance values. For example to find the inductance value we can look at the voltage waveform and also current waveform. Based on this simple equation which is valid for any inductor we can find the current through the inductor over this period which is basically when the switch is on. So according to this equation we can find the current that means the current at this time minus current at this time equals to V over L which is basically this integration V in minus V out over L times of DTS. So when we simplify this equation because this is the ripple so this current minus this current equals to 2 delta I. So in this case we can put it here and simplify the equation and because we found that V out equals to d v in so when we put it here we can get this equation finally which means the inductance value equals to d times of d prime times of v in over two switching frequency times of delta i suppose delta i is 10 percent of the inductor current dc current or is for example 0.1 amp then if we know that the input voltage and switching frequency and also due to cycle we can find the inductance value.